Hey everybody, welcome back. So, as everybody knows, about a week ago, Hurricane Ian came through and really did a number on Florida. Now, leading up to that, we got some, you know, some messages um, asking for some tips on evacuating with our animals and things like that. Um, so I thought that was a really good topic for us to hit, especially since there's so many reptile keepers in areas like Florida uh, that are subject to hurricanes and floods and things. And also for the folks that are out west where uh, wildfires right now um, and, and here for the last few years have run rampant through some of the areas and folks have had to leave their homes. And of course when you leave you've got to take your animals with you. So today we're going to be talking about emergency preparedness on intrepid exotics. So, real quick before we get started here, don't forget, we've opened up the merch store. We've got the shelf down here underneath all the videos. Jump down, we got hats, shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, stuff like that, coffee cups, all kinds of cool stuff on there. And I've also got the channel membership started and our Patreon page is started. So if you guys want to jump in, support the channel, help us grow, it's a great way to do it. Definitely appreciate everybody that helps us out. So. On to the topic of uh, emergency preparedness. Now, the first thing that comes to mind for me when we talk about being prepared for natural disasters, you know, fires, floods, hurricanes, storms, things of that nature, uh, it's all about advanced planning. Now, <clears throat> for me personally, I decide where I'm going to live based on the likelihood of natural disasters. Um, it just makes no sense to me, especially if you're going to do something that is stationary as a big reptile collection, um, to go someplace where you know at some point there's going to be a massive flood, there's going to be a bad storm come through. Uh, for me, it just makes much more sense to stay away from those areas altogether. Um, so you'll never see me living on the Gulf Coast, you'll never see me living on the East Coast. Um, you know, especially nowadays, hurricanes, they're increasing in frequency, they're increasing in intensity. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you're not in a floodplain and then keeping the most important things in your house someplace where you're expected to get a foot or two of water at some point. Um, and another thing that I do is, although we're not in a position where we get flooded out, I do have a couple creeks behind my house. And when we get really, really bad rains, you know, those things will run up and I do get some running into my uh, into my basement down here just a little bit. It always comes through the door just because of the way it's all set up right now. But um, all of my enclosures are elevated at least a foot up off the floor. So I don't keep any of my snake enclosures sitting right down on the concrete. If we get a really bad flood back here and I start getting water coming in, uh, you know, it's not going to fill up my animals enclosures. They're far enough off, off the ground. To where that's not going to be an issue and another thing that i do here is i keep all of my electrical wiring up off the ground um, i don't run any of my surge protectors any of my extension cords any of that stuff none of it's on the floor it all runs um over the, you know under the floor joists in here i've got some post supports that you know that's where my surge protectors hang and stuff like that so even if i was to take a foot of water in here on the floor then none of my surge protectors, none of my electrical stuff is going to short out because it's all elevated. Uh, so that's just another little peace of mind thing there for you. But, um, you know, like I said, best thing you can do is if you know you're in an area that's got a really good chance of getting hit and you've got a really big collection, if it was me, I would be looking for a safer place to live. Um, you know, I, I've got friends and family down in Florida. And they all say, man, I've been down here 20 years and I've had two little hurricanes. We've made it through all of them okay. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of people in Fort Myers right now that had said the same thing. 
and they're not okay. Um, so, like I said, if it was me and I had something that I can't just pick up and run away with, um, like a snake collection, I would definitely make sure, you know, if you're one of those folks that is just bound and determined to stay down there, uh, you know, try and find yourself a place that's on a little bit higher ground, a little bit further inland, so you're not taking storm surge and stuff like that. Um, you know, the, the more you can avoid, uh, the better off everything's going to be. And the same thing applies to, you know, wildfires, stuff like that. If you live out west where there's a lot of wildfires, you know, the floods, the hurricanes, the fires, all of that stuff, uh, it's really best when you're planning a place to just try and plan in the safest place that you can and you know Don't set yourself up for a harder time than you need to have now, I don't want to get too deep into the whole survivalist thing and you know EDC everyday carry stuff and bug out bags and all that other stuff because this isn't a survivalist channel but there are a couple things when you're looking at an evacuation that I just need to point out because they're useful um, one thing that I do is, you know, every day I wear this at work all around the house. Just a little pouch. It's got my Leatherman. It's got a flashlight and it's got a pen on it. So, you know, everyday stuff that, that you're going to find useful at some point or another. It's good to have. Now, if you don't want to carry it with you every day, you know, I would really highly recommend having one of these and keeping it, uh, keeping it handy where when it's time to go, you can go. And this is just a solar phone charger because this is one thing that a lot of people um, neglect to mention when you're talking about emergency procedures and things like that is that your best survival equipment is your cell phone. That's your best piece of Rambo gear that you can keep. That cell phone, you can navigate by it, you can call for help by it, you know, two really important things that you need to be able to do and if you're in an area where all of the power is down and there's no place to charge your phone if you're in the middle of a flooded out area or something you can always use a solar charger to charge up your phone call for help do whatever you need to do so these things are worth their weight in gold if you don't have one i definitely get one it has nothing to do with reptiles it's just good advice one thing to keep in mind is that you've got to have something to move your animals into really rapidly so for me i keep bins kind of stored all in here i've got bins pillowcases all of that kind of stuff so that if i absolutely need to and i need to come down here and get everybody out in a hurry i've got a couple big tubs that i can put my large constrictors in those big wheeled bins i'll put them in there those can get loaded up in the in the suv the rest of my animals the smaller ones i can put them in a bag Put them in the same container put some of the newspaper that i use for bedding crumple that stuff up put it in there to kind of help insulate them and stuff like that move them out to the vehicle uh, always make sure you've got several blankets start grabbing quilts and stuff like that you know anything that you can use to insulate them uh, while you're traveling because you never know what's going to happen on the way now another good thing to have on hand for when you need to get out and evacuate really quick is a spare tub and Throw some heat mats in there, throw a couple thermostats in there, you know, just stuff that you don't have on your regular enclosures, a couple extension cords and all that stuff. Because if you're evacuating your house, you don't know when you're going to be able to come back or if you're going to be able to come back. So you're going to move from that point and you're going to move to someplace else. And you can't leave, you know, if it's the middle of the wintertime, you can't leave your vehicle running continuously for days on end. You're going to have to move them animals into a building. And... When you do that, you're going to want to have at least the basic necessities there. You know, it's not going to be optimal. Um, if you've got a foldable grow tent that you can keep, and we mentioned this in um, dealing with powder out, power outages in, in an earlier video, but if you've got a grow tent that you can fit all of your tubs in and then just use the bare minimum amount of heat, keep that ambient temperature up there, then that will be enough to get you by until you can find a more permanent solution for them or until you can move back to the house. Now we're talking about something as simple as, you know, just your power going out or something like that. You know, of course, generators are always awesome to have on hand, um, depending on the severity of the outage and what's going on at the time. Um, LP gas heaters are among the best because we've seen it before. 
natural disaster happens, everybody rushes to the gas stations and buys the gas stations out of fuel, and a generator doesn't do you any good if you don't have any gas to run it. Um, it does you even less good if you got to stand in line for two hours to get gas to get your generator running while your animals are back at the house freezing. So, um, LP gas, if you get an LP gas generator and just keep a tank there, that LP gas isn't going to go bad. That LP gas generator um, is going to be much easier to uh, much easier to keep full or keep going uh, when they have the big rushes on the gas stations and so forth. And another good thing to do is to lighten the load on the generator that you've got by putting in um, an LP gas heater. You know, there's little wall units out there. A lot of them have got fans on them, but a lot of them will still burn in the absence of electricity. And they still put out a lot of heat, so they'll still raise the temperatures up. A um, couple things that you can do if you're having a hard time in a bigger space like this, trying to keep the temperatures up, is, um, you know, if the heater that you've got just isn't going to sustain a decent ambient temperature in that space, then you can tub your animals up, take them to the smallest room in your house, take, you know, whatever heating unit that you're using up there. Um, that, that smaller space is going to stay a lot warmer. Your smaller heaters, you know, even if you're running, like that little electric heater that I keep down here, uh, I can turn the central air system, central heat system completely off, turn that little thing on, and it's going to keep it between 75 and 80 degrees in here. As you can probably tell from most of my videos because it gets warm. <laughs> so one thing that I really encourage everybody to do is get down in the comments. I'm sure there's a million things that I could go over that I either didn't think of that I was planning on saying it slipped my mind since I don't script anything out. That happens. But I mean by all means guys use this as a forum. Get down there. Any other ideas, any other remarks and things like that that you may have, things that you've done that you found have worked, you know, as people watch this video, you should be able to go down in the comments and say, okay, well, yeah, Tim didn't say that, but that's a good idea too. So, you know, by all means, the whole community gets on board, throws some, throws some pointers down there too. Uh, it's just going to help everybody else out, help everybody be a little bit more prepared. So... Here this weekend, I am going to be starting episode one of the Nile Monitor Species Spotlight. Niles is healed up enough to where he can interact and stuff. He's doing really good. So we're going to go ahead and move forward with that. So that will be coming out next. And absolutely, guys, get down and like the videos. Get subscribed to the channel. If you want to support the channel, there's the Patreon page. There's channel memberships. And of course, there's a merch store down there. Uh, with some really sweet stuff there. So you guys have an outstanding day. Don't forget to drop your feedback down in the comments. And we'll see you next time on Intrepid Exotics.